In this video, we're going to talk about another very powerful function. It's called a VLOOKUP. This is one that we're going to use all the time. Let's say you show this to your boss, and your boss decides that for each department, you would like to see the department head and also the charity that they're, they're trying to raise funds for. Notice how I have that information on a separate sheet. I have a sheet that's called Department Info. And the Department Info sheet shows the department, the charity, the charity they're raising money for, and the, the, the department manager. Somehow I have to pull this information from this sheet and pull it over to sheet 2014. First of all, let's add some columns into this sheet. So I'm going to right click on column C and I'll say insert. In fact, I should, I'll do that again. I'm going to right click on column C and pick on insert. Of course, everything moves over to the right. In this case, I'll have manager and then I'll have uh, charity. Okay. Now, how am I going to get the information from that other sheet to pull over into this sheet? And I have to make sure I get the proper manager and the proper charity for that department. Well, the way we're going to do that is with something that's called a VLOOKUP. So once again, we, you could type in the formula for the VLOOKUP in, but we're going to use the function builder since this is the basic. So we're going to type in the equal sign here and we'll pick on this FX. So think about it. I'm trying to find the manager for the sales department and I know that's on the other sheet. So I'm going to pick on the FX. And now I know the function is called VLOOKUP. So in this screen, I'll just type in VLOOKUP. And then I'll click on Go. And it brings me to the VLOOKUP formula. I'm going to click on that function and I'll click on OK. Now notice how this function actually has four different parameters. And uh, the top three are actually required. And this one is optional, but we're still going to use that. The first thing it's looking for here is the lookup value. In other words, what are you trying to look up? Well, I'm trying to look up the I'm trying to look up the department sales. So in that case, it's going to be A5. Now the table array. Uh, the table array I know is in that other sheet. So look what I want to do. I'm going to pick on table array and I'm going to pick on the sheet that's called department info. And then I'm going to highlight. I don't need the header so much, but I need the data. Now the important part about this table is the first column, which is column A. So that's really where the lookup is going to occur. And by the way, notice how column A is sorted. That's usually important as well. Now this table can be many, many columns across and many, many rows down. But really it's doing the lookup in the first column of that table. It's important that you see that. Uh, so notice how it has the sheet name, department info and then the exclamation point, and then the cell references. So usually when you see the exclamation point, uh, that means before the exclamation point is the sheet name, when it's on a different sheet, and then the after the exclamation point is the cell references. Now the column index number, this is important that you see this. Uh, let me go back to this table over here for a second. In the table, this is column one, this is column two, and this is column three. So we don't use letters A, B, and C, but you use relative to the table. This is column one, column two, column three. So I want to get the manager, which is really the third row. So for the column index number, I'm going to type in the three. That means when I find the appropriate row, I want to get the third column from that table. Now you see where it says range lookup? Let's see what it says on this screen here. It says range lookup is a logical value. Find the closest match in the first column when it's sorting in ascended order. Then you put true there or you omit it. So if you either type in the word true or some people will type in the number one there, it means the same thing. Or if you just leave it blank, that means it's going to find the closest one, uh, the closest one that it can find, even though if it's not an exact match. If you really want to be an exact match, then you type in the word false there. Or I've even seen some people use the number zero, which means the same thing. I'm going to type in the word false. That means it has to be an exact match. So in this case, the lookup value is the cell that you're trying to look up, which is the, the word sales in column A. Now, I will look, I'll look at that up in the table array. And so the table array happens to be on the other sheet called the Parvet Info, and it was cells A3 through C9. 
the column index number means in that table, I want to find the third column, which uh, as I recall was the manager. And then the range lookup means false. So I'm going to click on OK there. It means you want to do an exact match. Now let's see if that's the case. It says sales, and it tells me that the manager for sales is uh, Chuck Masson. Let's see if that's the case. So if I click on department info, if I look at sales, the third column over, one, two, three, it does say Chuck Masson there, so that is correct. It found the proper manager based on that department. So let's go back to sheet 2014 here. Now I want to show you something important. This is actually going to be uh, a use of the absolute references that I talked about before in a previous video. I'm going to copy this down with the speed fill. Now, some of them say NA. Let me show you why. You see, I always, always wanted to look at A3 through C9. I want that to stay absolute. But when I did a regular speed fill, it changed this from the A4 to C10. See, it's still relative. This is now A5 to C11. It's moving, one, it's moving it down one cell for each row. That's a relative formula. But I really don't want that to change. So this is where we would use the dollar signs. This is an absolute reference. So here's what I'll do. I'm going to click in that cell, the first one, and I'll put a dollar sign before the A and a dollar sign before the 3. I'll put a dollar sign before the C and a dollar sign before the 9. That's going to make those cell references an absolute reference. Now I'll make sure that I copy it down. Okay, now let's see if it worked. So for marketing, is marketing is John Stamowski uh, the marketing department uh, manager? And he is. Jill Holiday, is she the manager for the um, advertising? And she, you can see that she is. So now, notice that when I have the proper view lookup, it's taking this information from column A, looking it up in the table in the department info sheet, finding the proper row, when it finds the final row, it's, fine. it's going to get the re uh, third column, one, two, three, which is the manager's name, and you can see it's really getting the proper manager for that department. Let's do another view lookup for the uh, charity. So I'll say equals, click on the FX again. Now notice how the V lookup is in my most recently used category. So your most recently used category starts to be your favorites. Well, I'll just click on the V lookup again. I'm still, I still will look up at that department. Uh, for the table array, I'm going to go back to department info and highlight that same exact information that we did before. Except we know that we need the dollar signs there. So we might as well just type those in. We know that's going to be necessary anyway. So we might as well do it right now. Now, on the table this time, I want the, um, the charity, which happened to be the second column of the table. So that's why I'm typing the number two there. And I also want these to be an exact match. So I'll type in the word false for the range lookup. So for the lookup value, I have A5. For the table array, it's actually still the same table array as before. Except now I want to return the second column, which is the charity. And then the range lookup is going to be false, which is uh, an exact match. Uh, now let's expand column D. That's better. And go ahead and drag that down. And now, based on the department for that row, it should have found the proper manager with this VLOOKUP, and it should have found the proper charity on this VLOOKUP. Notice how it's almost the exact same formula. The only thing that changed is that this one has number two in the third parameter, and this one has number three in the third parameter, because this one's returning the th third column, this one's returning the second column from the same row. Um, so now I need two different pieces of information here. I need the manager and the charity. That's why I have two different VLOOKUPs. So hopefully that gives you an idea of how to use your VLOOKUP formula in Microsoft Excel.